Hi guys, today we're gonna do something a bit different and um, this video idea came from the chat with King Koro we had over the discussion channel in Discord. You can join the Discord, link will be provided uh, in the description of the video as well as probably in the comments. So King Koro had the idea of uh, actually testing how the direct ML compares to the CUDA implementation on an actual NVIDIA GPU. Unfortunately, you can't compare how CUDA compares to um, direct ML on an AMD since CUDA is NVIDIA specific. What we are gonna do is simply compare how uh, TensorFlow 1.15 works with CUDA and uh, uh, with direct ML respectively. To do this, what we have is a simple script taken directly from uh, the Keras website. So um, if you want to just uh, come to the same thing, uh, I'll put a link in the description, but it is code examples, computer vision, simple MNIST covnet, and I literally copy pasted of the code. I thought of actually making it uh, 10 epochs instead of 15, because it will be easier to estimate what time it took per epoch but 15 is easy enough so i literally left everything the same it's all pasted in this uh, file here you can see and the only thing different is that uh, i included this uh, time dot times which would store the time and of course a for loop which will just give us results for 10 runs for each framework for each library. So what we're going to do is simply go ahead and run it. As you can probably tell I already did this but <laughs> uh, we can do it again. While this is working I'll just go to PowerShell and, uh, and show you. Okay, so we are doing this as you can see on a Titan RTX which is 24 gigabytes of memory and I can compare it. The problem is I wanted to compare it to 1080 Titan RTX, 1080 Ti Titan RTX and uh, 3090. Uh, then the direct ML version for 6,800 6, for AMD. But unfortunately, how my machines are really set up is that my Titan RTX machine is using CUDA 10.0, which is compatible with TensorFlow 1.15 and respectively DirectML. My 3090 is unfortunately because I moved to TensorFlow 2.0, um, and actually it's not 2.0 but it's 2.4. Uh, I had to upgrade to CUDA 11.1, which was a hassle by itself, and I am really using it for work so I can't really um, go back and change the CUDA version then change it back again because it's actively being used so unfortunately I can only provide the statistics for TensorFlow to point whatever my TensorFlow is and then we can compare all of them. I think I managed to create the direct ML version on 3090 as well, but unfortunately the TensorFlow 1.15 with CUDA is simply not available on my 3090. Uh, so I'll structure the results and show them to you. So we first have one which is uh, calculating the time it takes to just create the model. So everything right here. Uh, then we have one for which is just for compiling the model because this can vary a lot. And then we have one which is for the training and one for the evaluation. So we are recording these four sets of times for 10 experiments for each library. And um, I'll just, uh, no point of me showing you the TensorFlow uh, annoying messages. So I'll directly show you when it is ready the pandas describe table originally i did some more talking and explaining but essentially what i did is i created the needed anaconda environments both on the titan rtx and the 3090 i already had my 
AMD one on uh, the 6800 so now you can see really a time lapse of uh, how they run on all of the machines and all of the environments and uh, the important takeaway here is that I forgot to stop the logging of TensorFlow which definitely contributes something to the actual uh, elapsed time but what can you do no experiment is perfect I just wanted to give you these disclaimers that um, I didn't expect most of it to be milliseconds and because it is milliseconds actually the print statements do matter uh, I should have disabled them I didn't so just to let you know and probably you're here for the results anyway and you don't care about uh, the procedure if you do please let me down let me know down in the comments or uh, ping me in discord and I'll um, definitely go through it with you but now let's just jump into the results so here we are first at creating the model you can see um, actually the first thing you can see is that there is a discrepancy and the 3090 CUDA version is the slowest by a large margin so what I had to do is go back and check what has happened and there was just the standard deviation was very high and I wondered what's going on it was one second or something like this uh, and I saw that um, one of the results was uh, kind of corrupted uh, one of the runs sorry for just for the create model I'm not sure what happened maybe I used the PC then I'm, I'm not exactly sure but it was three seconds so after removing this uh, the results m look much more like this where you can actually see that the 3090 CUDA implementation is indeed the fastest but the surprising fact is the runner-up which is the Radeon 6800 with direct ML and you can see that actually the Titan RTX which is the most expensive card on the list is actually the slowest maybe that's because the actual model compiling happens on the CPU and the CPU there was not the best but that is what I got from my results and that is what we have here you can see that actually the CUDA implementation is a bit slower than the direct ML ones in general but uh, that is it for the creating of the models so let's go to the compiling for the compiled models you can actually see that the 3090 CUDA and the Radeon cards are the best here with 2 and 3 milliseconds respectively and that the Titan RTX is yet again lagging behind. I believe that must be because of the CPU and these are CPU intensive operations. I actually checked and the Titan RTX machine and the Radeon machine share the same CPU which is Ryzen 7 3800X and the 3090 machine is with the lower CPU version of that which is 3700 so interesting uh, I just wanted to mention it I'm not sure if it has to do with these results or not but let's jump into the thing we actually care about most which is a training so in the training you can actually see that the 3090 is indeed the fastest followed by a very small margin the Titan RTX and we can see that the direct ML implementations are way slower like more than three times slower than the actual CUDA implementations and we can see the Radeon is 66 seconds which is worse than the CUDA versions of Titan RTX and 3090 but it is surprisingly better than Titan RTX with direct ML with uh, for the same version of TensorFlow uh, to me that was a huge surprise uh, given the price of uh, the three cards also bear in mind these are seconds not milliseconds as the other ones and you can probably see how better the could uh, versions and nvidia cards are actually for training and i know it's not fair to compare the 2.3 version with 1.15 um, for CUDA and direct ml but actually i believe that's also a fair comparison because if you were to use the state of the art 
um, TensorFlow with available for CUDA is actually TensorFlow 2.x and for DirectML you don't have uh, 2.x so the best you can do is 1.15. You have um, with Titan RTX CUDA 1.15 the comparison for the same TensorFlow version but I believe it's also important to mention what is the current best time you can achieve with the Nvidia card and current best time you can achieve with the AMD card. Uh, ROCAM versions are also not covered here Probably I should cover them, but DirectML was uh, way easier to set up, so I believe that is what I'll be using and maybe most of the people will be using, so that's why I went for it. So without further ado, let's move to the evaluation. So here you can see the evaluation results and from what we can tell, the Nvidia cards are superior uh, to the AMD one. And also, um, it is important to mention that the CUDA version is by a small margin, actually, better than the direct ML implementations for all of the cards. Also, uh, important to mention is that the difference in uh, the NVIDIA cards and AMD card is actually not that big as you would expect and the 3090 actually delivers with this amazing performance we can see it's consistently better than the titan rtx by a large margin and it just speaks volumes because the price of the titan rtx at release and even now is uh, i think twice as much as the 3090 which is simply insane and speaking of prices, the price of the 6800 if we don't acknowledge uh, scalpers and uh, I don't know, some crazy resales, but we discuss the official prices, is actually almost half of uh, 3090. So it's crazy to see what uh, AMD have actually done and how DirectML can actually change the landscape of deep learning, especially for inference, with AMD cards now being actually a viable option. Maybe not for training again, I'm saying, but for inference for sure. Even for training, they're not that bad. And according to King Koro, who is the person who suggested that I do this video. Um, there are specific operations like uh, separable convolutions and other operations which DirectML is actually better for or CUDA is better for. So this would highly depend on the model you use and the setting you use it. But if you have good cooling, I would say that uh, if you can get your hands on an AMD card or an Nvidia card, in terms of time, it will be the same, but also remember that the latest available version of TensorFlow with DirectML is 1.15. So, no of the TensorFlow 2 features, unfortunately, and I hope they update it to TensorFlow 2. They're just trying to make it as stable as they can currently. I believe that uh, soon enough we'll have a TensorFlow 2 implementation for DirectML. With that all said and done, I leave you and uh, please consider subscribing because according to the analytics, more than 99% of you aren't subscribed. It means the world to me for every new subscriber. You can also join the Discord server. You're free not to subscribe, of course, or dislike the video if you want. But if it was useful, it means the world to me if you engage in some way and maybe consider subscribing. Thank you very much again and see you next time.